In this A-level and IB biology video, we're going to be looking at the processes of endocytosis and exocytosis, and both of these are methods by which substances can enter and leave a cell. But first of all, why can they do this? Well, this all relies upon the structure of the cell membrane, which, remember, is made up largely of phospholipids. So let's first of all make a comment, which is that the fluidity... of membranes allows materials to be taken in by endocytosis or released by exocytosis. So remember our phospholipids, they have their hydrophilic head which loves water the hydrophobic tails, which hate water. But crucially, the phospholipids are held together by weak bonds. This makes them fluid and flexible, allowing the membrane to spontaneously break and reform. And this is crucial when it comes to actually how we're going to carry out exocytosis and endocytosis. Because the membrane is breaking and reforming, clearly this process requires energy from ATP. And therefore is technically a form of active transport. So let's get into the nitty gritty of what exocytosis and endocytosis are. So endocytosis. Notice the only difference in the words is the beginning, endo versus exo. Endo is all about moving substances into the cell, whereas exocytosis moves substances out of the cell. And these are large substances. So I'm just highlighting the differences here. So how can we move substances into the cell? Well, Effectively, there's an invagination of the membrane, so it's effectively an infolding, which produces a flask-like depression, so a capsule, which actually envelops the extracellular material. So to write that slightly more simply, an infolding of the plasma membrane produces a flask-like depression, so effectively similar to a capsule, which surrounds or envelops the extracellular material. So that's the stuff we're trying to move into our cell. A vesicle is formed, which remember is kind of like a bubble. It's just a biological term for something which contains a particular material. So if I try to show you a little bit how that would work, here's the cell surface membrane. This is the outside of the cell. This is the inside of the cell. So we know that the nucleus would be found inside the cell. Now, here's the large substances that you're trying to move into the cell. That cell surface membrane enfolds a bit like this, allowing those substances to move into it. And then it breaks off to form a vesicle, so this bubble, which contains the extracellular material. Now there are two main types of endocytosis. The first one is phagocytosis, which is the process whereby solid substances enter the cell. And the second is pinocytosis, which is the process whereby liquids or dissolved substances enter the cell. Let's turn our attention to exocytosis now. We already know it's the process by which large substances leave the cell. Now here the Golgi apparatus is important because remember its role is to sort, store and modify secretory products. So any 
intracellular material, so material that's found inside the cell that needs altering, will go to the Golgi body already enclosed in a vesicle, which it then modifies before they move towards the cell surface membrane where they can be expelled. So let's write that. Vesicles from the Golgi apparatus fuse with the plasma membrane. Contents are expelled outside the cell, crucially. Now those vesicles are formed from phospholipids. So if we draw a rough diagram again, here's the outside of the cell again, here's the inside. So here's our vesicle containing our intracellular material, which is moving towards the cell surface membrane. And so that when that vesicle fuses, it will add its extra phospholipids to the cell surface membrane, making it slightly bigger, which is important because remember in endocytosis, we're effectively pinching off some of that cell surface membrane to move substances into the cell. So we don't want a net change in the size of the cell surface membrane. So these processes oppose each other and basically cancel each other out. And this process requires energy from ATP.